Welcome to part one of this mini-series. Please see the other segments for specific grooming topics or watch the entire process in one continuous session from start to end. My name is Sue and I'm a retired Himalayan Persian breeder. I showed and bred these beautiful cats for 10 years, but now we stay home together and enjoy the retired life. Follow along as I share each step of a maintenance bath with homebred retired show hall queen and princess of my heart, Peach Marmalade, affectionately known as Melly. I will leave a list of my favorite grooming tools in the description below. So this is Miss Melly. She's a dirty mess. She's even got a couple of little mats I've let her develop here so I can try to show you how to get those out. But the very first thing you should do before you be a cat is give them a really thorough combing. And the reason for that is depending on their hair length and coat texture. But a Persian, they tend to have the kind of snarls and mats that will felt when they get wet. So I like to use a comb that has both um, a medium and kind of a fine. Oh, Annie, she's purring, she likes it. She's not so crazy about getting wet, but okay, so when I get to a mat, I get the comb underneath it and I work it from the root up and these are kind of superficial, they're not too bad, but I'll, I'll kind of pinch the hair between the mat and the root so that it isn't really pulling on her skin too much. And I'll kind of just comb above it and try to break it up with the wide tooth comb. But she really only gets these kind of snarls under her chin from drinking out of water bowls and getting her chest wet. So they mostly just come out, they're all pretty superficial. Um, but I would use the back end of the wide end comb and just use the first couple of tines to kind of like comb or break apart a mat if I have one and I'll, there may be more I haven't, I haven't combed her out in a long, long time. Oh, she's such a good girl, so her purring. Now normally I bathe my cats well, about every three to four weeks. Sometimes I go five weeks in between animals. In the summer, I clip their coats down uh, into a lion cut. And when I bathe them, I can towel dry them because it's really hot so I don't have to go through the whole big process. We're right at the end of summer now and she has started to grow out her lion cut. So this is a few months worth of growth since she's been shaved down. And I'll show how to do that probably in another video because it's a good skill to learn. And it's just something you need to develop some comfort and confidence with. So I'm just kind of going over the easy part of her, which is her back with a wide tooth comb um, to break apart any clumps or, or small mats in her fur. The chest and the armpits tend to be the more, and behind the ears, the more um, high mat tendency zones. So she's got a mat there. So I would take my, can you see that okay? Can we be over here just a little bit, sweetheart? And clean off the comb for a second. I would take the end of my comb and kind of tease it apart. Can you see what I'm doing there? I hope so. 
I'm doing it kind of slower than I need to just so I can demonstrate. If it were bigger, I would just take my time and work my way through it. And if it were really bad, I would put a comb um, between her skin and the mat and then I would cut only above the scissors. And then if I had to, I would continue to pick apart any mats above that, but it's not that bad. So can I roll you over this way just a bit, sweetie? Oh, she's such a good girl. Um, it's really important to comb them out thoroughly before you get them wet. And if your cat is not used to being combed on a regular basis, this is something you should start practicing before they have mats because it's just kind of like how humans have tender spots on their scalp or the soles of their feet or armpits. Um, they tend to have soft spots and they become a lot more tolerant of it, kind of like a callus or a toughening in the skin. Not really like a callus, but you know, just more tolerant of it if you do it more regularly. So it's, it's best if you do it often. She's very tolerant, even when she's a little bit clumpy and matty like this. Um, I think she's just happy to be groomed, honestly. She usually really seems to be in the mood for this. She enjoys it. On the legs and the paws, I like to use a smaller comb that has finer teeth because the hair is a little more dense and um, it's just a lot easier to comb it more thoroughly with a small comb like this. Uh, don't push hard into the skin, you know, kind of comb from the root to the tip, not like along the leg necessarily, but along the fur if that makes sense. And just go slow and tell her what a beautiful good girl she is. Cause she is. <laughs> okay, so I might have some matting here. I'm gonna try to roll you over just a little, all the way. Can I roll you over all the way? Her nails need to be trimmed. She's sticking like Velcro just a little bit. Okay, right here, honey. So she's got a mat right here. This is a big one. Okay, this one I'm gonna have to cut, maybe. So can you see this okay? This is a really hard felted already, getting kind of close to the root, but I can still work my fingers between it, which is what I would do first. And just try to pull whatever hair that isn't necessarily involved in the mat away. Just kind of tease it away gently with my fingers. Now I want to be careful not to pull on her skin because her skin is thin. So in this case, I'm not even going to mess with trying to save her fur or anything. She's not a show kitty. She's a retired kitty. So what I would do, let me get my scissors. Good girl. Just take my comb and put it underneath the mat. I'm going to roll you back over this way just a little bit, sweetheart. Such a good girl. I know, I'm doing this slow because I'm going to try to get it for the camera. Hang on, sweet girl. Hang on. She's a good girl. Yes, she is. All right, here we go. So I would put my comb, no, 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 stay underneath it. And then cut above the comb. And then I can remove the mat that way. And then if there's still matted hair there, I could tease it out, but I pretty much got it all, so. Oh, I'm sorry, I bumped the table and struggled a little. Your nails are stuck, there you go. Hi, I'll be right side up for a minute. So I would use the same small comb on her face. Obviously, be very, very careful around the eyes if your kitty is skittish. Go slow and build trust. Her eyelashes are incredibly long, which in Persians will make them tear more. So you see how her hair over her eyes will actually fall over her eyes, and I'm going to trim that. And I'll show you how to do that. I'm not holding her around the neck at all. I'm literally holding my hand like this and she's supporting her cheekbones on my hand. 
and she's just purring away. She's happy. She's not being restrained in any way. Um, she's used to this. She was one of my show kittens and I started bathing her once a week when she was six or seven weeks old. And once she had her grand championship and regional win, retired her and then she gets shaved down every summer so it's very warm here where I live in Southern California it reaches triple digits we're in the low desert and she does not mind being a naked girl a little bikini girl in the summer This hair right here um, is really, it tends to mat, and when they wash their face, it also tends to get dirty because they use their inside wrists, like washcloths. So I would, I would comb out very thoroughly the legs, the armpits, we'll comb out everything very thoroughly actually. Oops. And because she hasn't been bathed, I skipped her last bath and then I delayed this one by two weeks. So she's like six weeks overdue now. Um, and I haven't clipped her claws for a while either. But I won't do that until after the bath probably. That's usually when I do claws. Which is kind of a mutual respect thing. Because it's like... She knows I won't intentionally hurt her, and I know she won't intentionally hurt me. And we trust one another to be gentle. Isn't that right, princess? And she likes it. She's perfect. She's a princess. She likes to be pampered. Go slow and be gentle. Their belly is ticklish like ours. Their armpits are ticklish like ours. The skin's a little thinner. There are a lot of nerves there. Mm. Just go slow. That's a good girl. So I'm kind of straightening her upper arm a little bit so that I can get into her armpit real well here. fur does like to mat. There's a lot of friction there and some oil glands. Sometimes they get urine on their fur. So the fur can get sticky. Um, in which case you can do a sanitary trim.
Now the back area also has some little mats, but they'll come out with combing. Just go slow and be gentle. If they're too big to break up with the comb, you can always do the scissors trick. So when I stay on schedule and bathe my kitties monthly, I really don't comb them in between, except maybe a little bit around behind the ears or around the face because they get their rough wet and I wash their faces when they need it. But I really, if I bathe them, they'll stay pretty clean. Now lately, because we've had all these fires in California for so long, the air quality has been so bad, all of the kitties have been, and the doggy too, have been having some excessive tearing and congestion. And I've even heard one of the kitties and my doggy doodle wheezing when the fires were really bad. I've been wheezing too. My husband has felt it. Our eyes, are, it's just that the air quality's been bad. So I've had to stay on their faces a little bit more than usual, but normally, when the air quality isn't horrendous, which I don't know when that is in California anymore. Um, I only have to wipe their faces like maybe once a week.